A mechanical wall clock often have an elegant feature of audibly telling the time every hour. If it's 1 o'clock, then clock generates one striking sound. If it's 2 o'clock, then it makes two striking sounds one after another. Generally two types of mechanisms were very popular for this purpose. 1. Count wheel mechanism and 2. Rack snail mechanism. This clock uses a count wheel striking mechanism. So let's try to understand how this striking train works. To make audible sound mechanically, first, a bell-like device is required. This coil gong is used for this purpose. This is a thick hardened steel wire shaped in a spiral form, and one end attached to a metallic base. When this striker hammer hits the gong pipe, gong vibrates and produces a long resonating sound. This striker hammer is mechanically rigged to get activated every hour when minute hand reaches to 12 o'clock position. This set of gears and wheels makes it possible. This is called the striking train of this mechanical clock. First, we need a power source. This flat spiral spring powered great wheel works similar way like in time side. First, key is inserted on the arbor then turned to coil the spring and store mechanical energy. Now it's ready for action. Spring turns arbor, arbor turns ratchet wheel, and via Paul, great wheel turns. Now, great wheel can drive the lantern pinion gear of second wheel of the strike train. Second wheel's big gear drives the pinion gear of the third wheel. Third wheel's big gear drives the pinion of warning wheel. And warning wheel drives the flywheel pinion. If great wheel rotates counterclockwise, then second wheel turns clockwise, again, third wheel turns counterclockwise, and warning wheel turns clockwise, and again fly turns counterclockwise. This count wheel is an essential part of the striking train, it is fitted with the great wheel coaxially. Third wheel has a disc inside, with cam-shaped two notches in opposite sides. Also there are two pins extruded out. This is called maintenance cam. When this wheel rotates, this pin pushes the tail of the striker, so hammer moves away from the gong while opposing the force of retaining spring at the striker pivot. When striker end gets free from pin, hammer suddenly moves forward and hits the gong. So, to make it work, this maintenance cam wheel with pins should turn using the power of great wheel. And, this wheel should turn only when minute hand reaches to 12 o'clock position in every hour. This whole process is quite interesting. These levers helps to activate and deactivate this mechanism. This arbor or shaft has three levers attached to it. So all three levers rotate together. This is the maintenance lever, rest in the notch of the maintenance cam. And this one is called the count lever, rest in the slot of count wheel. And this one is the locking or warning lever, it rests on the pin of warning wheel. This wire spring prevents these lever from turning up. Little down position, another shaft has two levers. This one is called the lift lever, its end piece rests against count lever. Another small lever rod is fitted on the center arbor or minute arbor. When the minute hand turns, the minute or center arbor turns along with it. So this lever fitted on center arbor rotates too. And the J hook rests against these lever. These levers arrangement varies depending on different designs of different clocks. This lever is positioned such a way that when minute hand reaches to 12 o'clock position, so this lever turns and pushes the J lever. As this lift lever is fitted on the same arbor, lift lever turns too, pushing the count lever up. With count lever movement, maintenance lever and warning lever turns too. As a result, count wheel, third wheel and warning wheel gets unlocked and becomes free to rotate. Now the striking train is fully activated. Spring force turns the great wheel, and great wheel turns the second wheel, and second wheel start turning the third wheel, and so on. Now the pin on the maintenance cam catches the striker end, pushes it, 
and suddenly it gets released. As a result, striker hammer hits the gong and stops. Here, all gears keep running until count lever front end drops into the count wheel's deep slot due to spring force, then it stops the great wheel's rotation. So great wheel no longer supplies power to other gears of these gear train. And the whole mechanism stops. In the next hour, again this system activates. Lift lever rises up the count lever, maintenance lever, and warning lever moves up. Great wheel and count lever starts turning, and whole striking train starts working again. Here count wheel has a tooth before next deep slot. So count lever does not drop in that much. At the same time, count lever's halt position prevents maintenance lever from falling into cam slot. With maintenance cam's rotation, maintenance lever pushed out, so count lever rises above the count wheel teeth. All gears keep running, and second strike happens, and gong sounds again for second times in a row. But, now there is a deep slot in the count wheel. So count lever turns and gets stuck into it, locking the count wheel and other wheels, and whole striking train stops. Number of deep slots and its position on the count wheel controls the work timing of this gear train, and controls the number of hammer strikes occur after every hour. When this flyplate rotates, its rotational speed gets limited by air resistance. It regulates other gears' rotational speed. If this video give you the basic idea, then give it a like, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.